Hi folks, um, Callan Bentley from Piedmont Virginia Community College here. I'm in Maine. Um, this is coastal Maine, uh, specifically a place called Birch Point State Park. And uh, the rocks here are pretty cool. They are some early Paleozoic granites that show some interesting intrusive relationships. So um, most of the rock here is uh, felsic intrusive igneous rock. It's got nice big feldspars that catch the light and gleam showing the plane of cleavage. Um, but then it's also got some cool things such as microgranular mafic enclaves and um, some aplite dikes. Uh, and then the whole thing has been glaciated and um, the glaciers uh, not only scratched up these rocks but also dumped a bunch of uh, debris from elsewhere on top of this site. So let's take a look at some of these features. Okay, so here, for example, is an aplite dike. The aplite dike is finer grained than the granite that it cuts across. You can see here that it has broken and um, nature, not looking to waste any energy, has broken it along the shortest path possible, which is uh, perpendicular to the trend of the dike. So that's the least number of chemical bonds that need to be snapped in order to make a fracture. Um, so clearly the principle of cross-cutting relationships here says that this aplite dike must be younger than the granite that it cuts across. Within the granite itself, we've got these features like you can see right here by my shoe. These are microgranular mafic enclaves. Um, so at first glance, you might think these look kind of like a, uh, a xenolith, but um, these are probably actually not original country rock that broke off and dropped into the magma chamber, but instead little blobs of immiscible mafic magma that um, just wouldn't mix with the uh, surrounding felsic magma. And so they made little blobs like those in a lava lamp and solidified earlier uh, than the rest, the rest of the, uh, the granite and um, as a consequence are preserved with a slightly finer grain texture than the surrounding granite magma. One thing that's kind of neat about these microgranular mafic enclaves is the weathering pattern that they show. You might think because of their mafic composition that they would weather way more rapidly than the surrounding granite and create little hollows in the rock. But what I've noticed here is that often the core of the microgranular mafic enclave um, actually stands proud of the surrounding granite. It weathers out positively as a, a positive topographic feature. Um, but often the edges are more weathered away. Basically the contact between the MME and the surrounding granite is often uh, negatively weathered out. So it creates this sort of interesting texture where the granite kind of dips down right at the contact with the MME and then pops up again uh, in the middle. Here's another example of that same phenomenon. Here's another dike that is cutting across the main granite, but this one looks very different pegmatite. You can see here that it's got very large crystals filling it in. And those very large crystals um, are dominated by um, white feldspar and pink feldspar, probably two different varieties of orthoclase there, and um, a little bit of quartz as well. So this is evidence of a really juicy late stage intrusion into the main body of the magma. These coastal outcrops of granite are pretty uh, busted up. A lot of fractures running through them and a lot of the weathering takes place along those fracture networks. But uh, what I'm struck by right here is the fracture network that is parallel to the surface of the outcrop. And that is probably uh, related to unloading. Uh, we call these exfoliation joints. And um, you know, to, to understand what's going on here, you need to remember that granite forms deep underground, right? So it's an intrusive igneous rock. We know that it took a long time to cool on the basis of the really large grain size, the phaneritic texture. And, um, you know, this granite may have formed, uh, you know, 10 kilometers below the surface. 
10 kilometers is uh, a lot of rock to have sitting on top of you from day one. And when uplift brought these rocks to Earth's surface, that weight has been removed. And so the rock tends to expand out a bit into the empty space that is the atmosphere. And it actually expands by an amount that's greater than the internal strength of the rock. And so consequently, it fractures and develops these sort of sub-horizontal or outcrop parallel joint sets. Okay, this is perhaps a little bit difficult to see because of the dappled sunlight on these rock outcrops. But there are some nice glacial striations running over this surface. Those striations run along the outcrop surface kind of in this direction here, right? And that shows us the flow direction of the glaciers that most recently scoured these outcrops. Well, this is an example of one of these boulders that didn't originate from here. You can see it's got a radically different color and texture from the native outcrops here at Birch Point. And so this is an example of a glacial erratic, uh, a block of bedrock that was lifted out by the glacier and carried some distance and then ultimately abandoned in a location that doesn't match its lithology. So it's a visitor from elsewhere. And the word erratic strikes at the heart of uh, that discontinuity between what the rock looks like and what the surrounding geology looks like. So most of what excited me about this location is the uh, outcrops of bedrock that are present on the headlands that bound the cove in either direction. But the beach itself also has some pretty cool geology in the form of an unusual mineral that's found as a major constituent of the sand at this location. If you look at the sand on the beach in certain areas, it lacks the typical tan color. It sort of has a purplish hue to it. So here's an example of that. And that purplish hue is actually the presence of a lot of garnet in this sand. All right, so this is a very garnetiferous sand deposit on this beach, indicating that um, this sand is at least partially sourced to rocks that are really rich in garnet, and those are most likely metamorphic rocks. Right now it's uh, a little past low tide, tide is climbing. You can see that the beach is pretty wet despite having been exposed by the sea for hours and hours now. What you're seeing here is actually freshwater, groundwater that is flowing through the beach sand, flowing downhill towards sea level, and that water as it flows is organizing the garnet sand into some beautiful patterns. So basically these are little placer deposits of garnet that are being sorted by the current. Okay, up here at the top of the beach, uh, one final thing I wanna point out, and that is uh, that there are these deposits of beach cobbles, very well rounded, definitely sculpted by the surf. Um, but you can see that when you get up to the top of the beach, they um, kind of curl over into a pretty steep front that seems to be defined by the angle of repose. And then behind that, there's sort of this uh, swampy area upstream. So I think what this is, is this is winter storm deposits of these cobbles on the beach, um, getting pushed up by really energetic waves beyond the reach of sort of everyday waves and certainly beyond the reach of the tides. These cobbles are really clean, kind of sun bleached, nothing growing on them. And that suggests that they uh, were deposited here and then kind of left here. <laughs>